Hi, I'm Jennifer Poindexter, Director of Missouri Farm Bureau's Promotion and Education Programs. Today we are joined by Barry Bean, a farmer and cotton merchant. Barry, thanks for having us. Oh, glad to have you all here. Glad to have you here. I know that you talked with my brother out in the field earlier um, and, and looked at some cotton in the field and I wanted to show you a little bit about what it's going to look like later on. Now, now this is a, this is a plant that, uh, that Aaron brought in earlier and you can tell that the leaves were removed here just because we wanted to get a better look at, at the bowls and this is what the this is what most of the cotton is going to look like in about another two weeks after what, what y'all saw in the field and you see the the green bowls are hard there's still just a few blooms left in the top and a, and a few squares now if you were to come by in about a month the cotton would look a lot more like this. Now you can see here we've, we've still got the leaves in the plant and the bowls on the outside that green husk will turn brown and get kind of hard sort of like tree bark and then we end up with with soft cotton fiber here like like what you'd see if you went to the store and bought uh, some cotton bowls or looked on the end of a q-tip and this is the cotton that's actually in the in the field on the plant. Well before we can pick this, if we went, were to go through the field with our cotton picker in this, one of the problems we have is that these leaves would get up into the cotton and you wouldn't be able to make very nice shirts or sheets or any kind of fine textiles because there would be a lot of trash and also they can kind of wad up and make uh, like what we call pepper trash. You, know, you you may have heard in history class about a guy named Eli Whitney who invented the cotton gin. And uh, the cotton gin is where cotton goes to get separated into all the products. We go from being out in the field where the cotton looks like this to being to a point where the cotton looks like this. And it's just clean pure lint that we can then use to make fabrics, uh, to make the blue jeans you're wearing, the t-shirts you're wearing, the, the sheets that you sleep on. But let me let me walk through a couple of things. When, when the cotton goes into the cotton picker, we call it seed cotton at that point because it's, it's the cotton with most of the trash removed but it still has seeds in it. And here you can see this is seed cotton and you can see it's still got a little bit of trash in it and if you could feel it you'd feel that it's still got seeds in it. Okay so when it goes through the gin there's actually little saw blades that will go through that and they'll pull the fiber off in one direction and then send all the seeds and trash down in another direction and all the fiber as you can see here we get really nice clean pure cotton and I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but, but this is really, really nice cotton. It's very white with just a tiny little bit of a yellowish tint to it. Cotton also, we have seed that we remove, that we save. And now some of that, we can just go out and plant this. You can take these seeds and plant them and grow your own cotton. But we also send them to a cotton seed mill where they take these seeds and they crush them and there's oil in the seeds. And I don't know if you eat sardines or if you eat anchovies or, or other sorts of canned fish, but a lot of times they pack fish in cottonseed oil. They can use cottonseed oil in lubricants for automobiles. They can use it in household paint. And as a matter of fact, they're working on a way to make cottonseed oil um, 100% edible so that you could actually go to the store and you could buy soy oil, corn oil, olive oil, and cottonseed oil because it does have a, a unique flavor. So that's that's another one of the products that comes out of the gin and goes to the cottonseed mill. But there's still more. There is what we call cotton trash and this is all the leaves and hulls from the cotton little bit of dirt but mostly leaves and holes and plant material that wasn't seed and wasn't cotton but was still in the seed cotton when it came to the gin. 
and they separate this out again and then they could use this for fertilizer or for mulch or for compost or they can even use it for packing material. Now moats are the cotton that got removed out of the trash. When we took the really good cotton off initially and separated out the seed then we separated out the trash. There was still a little bit of cotton fiber left. Now these moats, they've been beat up because they've, they've gone through the cotton picker. They've gone through the cotton gin and little saws have kind of plucked them away. And then they got cleaned and little saws plucked them away again. So whereas all the cotton and the good fiber is really nice clean fiber and they're all uniform, these have a lot of color, they still have some trash in them, and they're all different lengths. So you can't really make, like say, a nice shirt or a nice cotton sheet out of them. And if you tried to dye them, they, they wouldn't take up colors very well so that your clothes would be a nice even color. But they can use these for things like bandages. And when I talked earlier about cotton bowls and Q-tips, this is what they actually use. And now if you notice that the color is different than you normally see, it's because they can take these and clean them again, and then they will bleach the cotton, the cotton out to make it white and make it sterile, and they can use it for very low quality textiles. So every bit of the plant ends up being used for fertilizer, for industrial use, for food use, and for textiles. We see the little bales. Now, when the fiber comes out of the back of the gin, we need to take it to a warehouse to store until it goes to the spinning mill, spinning mill where they will make the clothes that they're going to. And they pack the cotton into bales. Now, now these are little miniature bales because they would have to pack a lot of bales to pack the cotton crop into these. But they have a press that presses the cotton at up to a million pounds per square inch into these bales and then they wrap them in a covering and put bands around them and then pack them in a truck and take them to a warehouse. And now let me tell you what happens to the cotton after that because it's, it's kind of interesting. Every bale of cotton is different. Kind of like everybody in your classroom is different. Some of you are tall, some of you are short, you got boys, girls, different colors, different sizes, everything. Well, cotton is a lot like that. It may all look the same to people that aren't in the cotton business, but some of it has a little more color, some of it the fibers are a little stronger, some of it the fibers are a little longer, some of it will weave and make really high quality textiles, and some of it needs to be for, for coarse stuff, for something like, say, blue jeans, where you just want it to be strong, but it doesn't have to be so perfect. And you remember when you were here in the summer and I showed you the different products, the, yep. the moats that will be cleaned again, the seed that will go straight to the cotton seed mill, some of just the gin trash that people will use for fertilizer or to make fuel pellets, and then the good lint that we'll use to make shirts and sheets and socks and all sorts of good stuff for it. So a lot of this can go towards animal feed, right? So it can, it has, mul cotton is a multi-purpose Yes, crop. yes. Some of the trash can go to, to animal feed, but mostly the uh, cotton seed, because the cotton seed has, has oil in it and it has a lot of fat in it. And uh, dairy farmers in particular like to feed the, uh, the cotton seed. And actually we're, we're in the process now of breeding cotton seed that people could eat. See, cotton has a chemical in it called gossypol. And gossypol, is, it's concentrated enough, is poisonous to people. I mean, you could eat this seed and nothing would happen but if you sat down and ate a bowl of seeds, they would give you an upset stomach. It doesn't bother cows because cows have two stomachs, so they remove the gossypol. Well, now we're breeding new types of cotton that don't have gossypol in them, and in another couple of years, 
you might be able to go out and buy cotton seed just like you buy sunflower seeds or or corn nuts or deer nuts or you know all, all sorts of peanuts and any sorts of uh, nuts that you might eat but 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 the cotton seed oil and the cotton seed itself is used both in animal feed and in in human feed products they, they extract the oil that doesn't have the bicycle in it and uh, they pack fish in it they use it as an additive in uh, vegetable oil uh, they've even got some industrial uses they can use it in furniture polish they can use it um, for, for all sorts of lubricants so uh, so yeah the cotton seed goes there's, there's there's no part of this plant that goes to waste and even the plant that's left in the field will eventually either either get left in the field all winter or it'll get disked under to decompose underground and return some of the nitrogen and the nutrients back to the soil. Cotton gin is where we take the cotton out of the field and separate the seeds from the lint to put the lint in a package where Mr. Farmer can sell it. Processed bales of cotton goes to a warehouse where it is stored and it stays until it's sold and shipped to its final destination. So cotton goes, I mean, when you look at the whole process, the plant, I'm all the way to here, there's a lot of processing that's involved to get the cotton into our clothes and our sheets and our towels. Is that correct? That is correct. But And every bale of cotton has a quality grade and it takes a different kind of cotton for blue jeans versus a real nice shirt. Thank you so much for working with your farmers in your community and being a part of the agriculture industry. The module truck delivers the cotton to the gin yard. Cotton modules can stand up to the weather for many months without damage. Here you can see the round modules that are made by the cotton picker in the field. Here you can see the module feeder where cotton is loaded from the trailer into the module feeder and a walking floor pulls the module to be broken apart by fingers at the end for ginning. These modules are an older style module that used a special module maker instead of being made on the picker and that's why they are larger and square but they're the same as the round modules. This is seed that came directly out of the picker that still has the seed, the trash, and some green bowls in it. As the module is broken apart a special vacuum sucks the cotton into the gin and the cotton goes through the first phase of cleaning where green bowls, large trash, and foreign objects are removed. As you can see, the suction pulls the cotton up into the lint feeder, and as it pulls it up, heavier objects will fall down, which keeps them from damaging any of the gin machinery further on in the process. The gin stand uses a series of saw blades and combs to separate the seed from the actual cotton fiber. You can see the fiber come down into the section where the saw blades are behind the little symbol there and the seed fall down below. The seed is then carried by a conveyor belt to the seed house where the seed is stored until it is used later for cattle feed or sometimes sold to the cottonseed oil mill for use as cottonseed oil either in food production or in industrial production. This is the tie feeder, which feeds nylon straps into the cotton press to hold the cotton bale together. In the press, cotton fiber is compressed into a 500-pound bale, and then a sample is automatically cut from each side for classing. The gin worker, as you can see here, then takes both samples, carries them over to another worker who attaches a bale tag that identifies the source of those samples and ties them to that particular bale. Those samples are then sent to the USDA where each bale is classed for a wide variety of characteristics including fiber quality, fiber color, fiber strength, fiber length, and then the bale is sent to the warehouse for storage until the next user goes to the warehouse to pick it up. 
Once the bale is classed, the gin sends me the classing information. As the cotton merchant, I work with both the farmer and the mill to find the best price and then ship cotton to the buyer and pay the farmer. And that is how cotton goes from the field to fabric to turn into the shirt or pants or sheets or towels that you use and wear every day.